Hi there, and welcome back to lesson number 13 on your Bioptimizer's Healing Health and High Performance, your complete guide to biological optimization. And today, we're going to start the next three lessons, which deal with the three stages that you're going to go through on your journey to what we call biologically optimization or feeling the highest levels of healing health and high performance that you can achieve for yourself and this stage is where people start at and we all have a certain amount of it it's called assimilation okay so we're going to put that down assimilation that's a mouthful isn't it so this is stage what i call stage one of your process so we have known from the hundreds and thousands of people that have gone through this process is that most people have a challenge actually absorbing the things that they need and they've absorbed too much of the things that they don't. So let me, dig let me I kind of digress on that. So let me get to the point. When your body ingests everything, there is a, a misassumption or that everything that you eat goes inside your cell. Remember our cells are over here. Here's our cells. But in order for anything to get to our cells, it has to go through what? It has to go through our digestive system, right? And our digestive system, and I'm going to draw a really bad person here, okay? So bear with me. So here's the person, and here's your, there's, there's, your, there's your little mouth going on. And you have a single tube that goes all the way down here, and then goes all through into your stomach, and then you see all your intestines and all that sort of stuff, and then it comes out over here. So here's the person. This is the world's worst diagram, okay? But you get the picture, okay? Now, what happens is at the start of this program, you start eating this food, okay? And you start chewing it, and what happens is you release a certain amount of enzymes in here inside your mouth, and then it goes in here and starts to break down. The upper cardiac portion of the stomach, the first half, that's when hydrochloric acid comes in. You have acid that comes into your stomach and helps break down some of the proteins in conjunction with the enzymes that hopefully are present in the food. And if they're not present, you better add some into your diet. Then what happens is it leaves the intestinal tract. What goes on here is that your body adds what's called bicarbonate buffers. It's a fancy name for minerals which goes into your body to buffer these acids so it doesn't burn out your stomach. Some people have, you know, when they have problems of their stomach, it's because the acid's coming over. These are called perforations or ulcers or that type of thing. This also happens when you have uh, a, an imbalance in your probiotic level. So we talked about probiotics, those, that 10, 80, 10. If you have an imbalance there, sometimes you'll have what's called bad bacteria that producing toxins that are toxic to your body and rob your cell from essential nutrients that it requires. It never gets there. It's feeding some bugs. And after that, what happens is your body eliminates it through the colon. That's where the waste product goes. Now, somewhere in this whole process, boy, that is just a, let's put some hair on this person. I mean, that is just one horrible person, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, let's go back here. Hey, I didn't take art in school. But the bottom line is, is that when you eat your food, it contains fats, carbs, and proteins. These are the, the energy components and the building blocks for your entire body. Now, unfortunately, there's also a whole bunch of things that nowadays come on our, uh, on our products, and I call these chemical agents. Things like sweeteners, fillers, binders, preservatives, food coloring, and dyes. Our bodies haven't been exposed to these agents long enough that we've genetically adapted. And so what happens when you take in these agents, sweeteners, fillers, binders, preservatives, food coloring, and dyes, what happens is our body, our liver, our organs, our kidneys, these type of things can't process these very well. So what do they do? Instead of putting those into a cell that we need, it'll put them into, guess what? A fat cell. In other words, a, sa a cell where you can store chemicals. And when they take the liposuction, you know where they, people suck the fat off? Well, what happens if you look under those, under the microscope, oftentimes what you find in there is things like 
agents, fillers, binders, preservatives, food coloring. You find uh, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, all sorts of nasty chemicals that have no business being inside your body. So why was that? And basically it works down to this. Assimilation. I'm going to erase this horrific person here. I mean, that's a really bad diagram. Hopefully we'll get some nice pictures for you on that. But what we have found is that most people aren't absorbing the food from their body because, again, we talked about this, they don't have enough enzymes inside their body that's present in order to digest the food. They don't have a proper delivery system. It's all bound up because they're dehydrated. And so they don't have a flow of fluids. And more importantly, they're not able to eliminate, eliminate the chemical components. So they start assimilating bad things into their fat cells and they start starving themselves. Sometimes we call this the starving and polluting cycle. Populations today are starving themselves from the things that they need, and they're polluting themselves with the chemical agents that they don't need. So that's the starving and polluting cycle. I talk about that in one of my books, Staying Alive in a Toxic World, if you want to go in depth. So what we want to focus on here is we want to focus each and every day in ensuring that we assimilate good fats, good carbs, and good proteins inside our body. And how we do that is we do our ritual a day. You know, for me, I ensure that I have enzymes because you need enzymes to break down the food, and I take enzymes and probiotics every single day. Those are the only things. So enzymes and probiotics. I don't know if you can see that. My marker is getting a little dead. Those are the only things that increase assimilation of your nutrients. They also help in elimination, which we'll get to in a little bit later part of this series. But understand this. Chew your food really well. That's an important component. Number one, take enzymes before every one of your meals, particularly if you're eating cooked food. Number three, make sure you're getting probiotics inside your diet regularly, either from high probiotic foods like fermented foods or by supplementing with a probiotic formula like our P3OM probiotic that ensures that you're getting the food that you need so you have that balance of 80-10-10. That increases assimilation. Also, if you're selecting minerals or vitamins, make sure they're in a format that your body can absorb. It's virtually impossible to get all the minerals and vitamins your body requires in your diet. It's just, it's just really not that possible. So choosing a liquid-based vitamin and mineral is critical so that you can ensure that you're absorbing as maximum amount with a little leftover residue. So that's the basics of assimilation. We're going to go to the next phase in the next level, which is called nutrification, which we'll get more into this one here. So we'll see you on the next level.